William Regal. Oh, is this a story? I remember, I remember when I was one. mocked and ridiculed for this story. Oh, what's a what? William Regal will reportedly start back with the WWE in early 2023. You know, here's what Dave wrote in the uh, the Observer. I believe there's something that's going on here. Uh, multiple stories regarding his contractual status. He said, "I've had so many different people tell me so many different stories. The primary source story is that his contract was short term. WWE side said that he had an out. So here's the thing, everybody." I don't know what happened. I don't want to say that I think that my version is correct. I don't know what happened. But what I like to do when there's alternate stories is I like to think, this is stupid, I like to think logically, okay? So here are the two stories. One story is that he signed a short-term deal. His deal is coming up. And he is going back to WWE. The other story from the WWE side is that he had an agreement that if Triple H returned to power, he would be allowed to go back to WWE. Okay? Now, people have ridiculed the idea of that. All right? So, let's, look at, let's look at the two stories. <laughs> well, they're, they're like, well, how come no one else signed a deal like that? Oh, come on. Okay? Now, hold on. Listen. All right, good. Listen. Good. Okay. First off, William Regal is not vying for the world title. He's not wrestling. He's out there as a manager. He ended up being a manager for the Blackpool Combat Club. I don't think he was signed for, like, high six figures. I think that there's a decent chance that they contacted him after he had been released, and he was willing to do it. But he's very, very loyal to Triple H. Triple H has saved his job multiple times. And whether it was an actual clause or a verbal agreement— it was like, if he comes back, I would like to return. And Tony does a lot of things for his guys, and he was like, okay, I agree to that. I think that that is the most likely scenario, because this is not a story that came out of WWE two weeks ago. This has been a story that's been talked about in NXT going back months and months and months. They believed that months ago before any of this ever happened, okay? Now, the other idea is, well, he signed a short-term deal. Well, first off, when he signed, we heard it was a multi-year deal. We didn't hear that it was a short-term deal. Second, he signed a nine-month deal. Not, not a year. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to commit to a year. I'll give you nine months. So nine months ago, he thought, you know, I have this feeling that in December... Vince will have been removed from power, and Triple H will be running the main roster. So therefore, I'll ask for a nine-month deal, which will expire just in time for me to return. Maybe he signed a nine-month deal. But to me, of the two options, he somehow knew that something was going to happen, and in nine months, Triple H would be in power, and that'd be a great time to return. That's A. Or B... He had an agreement with Tony that, listen, I much, I, I, I like it much better staying in Florida. I don't really want to travel. I'm willing to do it. But if something happens, I would like to go back. And Tony said, I respect you. They all respect you. I will give you that. That's what I think is more likely. We'll get Mike's thoughts after the break. Observer Live. So, um... One of the questions was uh, on the chat here, why why would Regal have uh, presumed that Triple H was was going to end up back in power? Okay, and I don't I don't know I don't know why, but I can speculate, and that is because this guy worked with Vince McMahon forever. Okay, and I mean, do we need to make a list here over the next decade of things that Vince did and went back on? Over and over and over and over again. W William Regal worked in, in developmental, and he worked in scouting, okay? Do you know how many times Regal was told that there was a change in scouting? And we are, in fact, we know about it because of the email that MJF read. How many times was there a change in the way that WWE is doing scouting? We only want people 6'2". We only want people 225. We don't want any wrestlers. The, la the, the most recent time they did that, I mean, the day the day it happened, we were like, this ain't going to last. You know what? It didn't last, okay? So, 
Triple H was removed from his position as head of developmental, and they started this NXT 2.0. You guys remember the first few weeks of NXT 2.0? The colors, all the green guys. The show was a horror. It was nothing like the old NXT. If you're William Regal, would you not take one look at this colorful NXT 2.0 with Vince and Dunn in charge and go, dude, there ain't no way this is going to last. There's no way. We're going to be back to the other NXT. I don't know if it'll be six months, a year, whatever. He's very close to Triple H. Triple H had a health issue in September. He signed with AEW in March, October, November, December, January, February, but six months post Triple H is his deal. And, you know, I'm sure he was talking to Triple H all the time. And by February, March, he probably had a good idea that, you know, this guy's doing all right. And does, did anybody think we were never going to see Triple H in WWE again doing anything? Like we'd never see him again. So I don't think it's, it's a stretch at all to think that he talked to Tony and said, you know, I'm really loyal to this guy. This NXT 2.0 thing, it ain't working. It's nothing like it used to be. This deal of only not looking for pro wrestlers, like it's not going to work out. You know, I, I think that at some point it's going to go back to the way it was, and I don't want to travel. I'd rather stay at home. I'm, I'm, I've got health issues. You know, he's talked about his health issues. You know, it's probably not fun being on the road in airports every week. I can totally see him talking to Tony, and, you know, he... And Danielson are close. Him and Moxley are close. You know, they all respect this guy greatly. I can absolutely see something like this happening. I think that's way more likely than I'm going to sign a nine-month deal. Actually, less than that. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Yeah, nine months. I'm not very good at math. But I find it far more likely that he did that than I want to sign exactly a nine-month deal. Because I think in December, it'll all be different. And I'm going to want to go back. But I don't know. All I know is it looks like he's going back. The odds he signed a nine-month deal are... That, that's just too perplexing for me to even, like, comprehend something like that. I mean, he probably did sign for a year or signed for three years, but actually had enough foresight to go, I want this in my contract. Okay? It, it doesn't... There's a no. There's no trade con. There's all of these things that you can put in a contract if you have a lawyer and the lawyer knows what they're doing and you know what system and what profession that you're in. After all of these years, certain things that you are required, you are going to want. And if Tony Khan said okay to that, which I don't see why he wouldn't say okay to thirty sixty days, this will be the out. And if Triple H actually gets back in charge, we will go ahead and release you. Now, let's just say Samoa Joe was looking for that because Samoa Joe wasn't fired once, but twice. The second time after he was brought back by Triple H, after his father-in-law cut him. Then he was cut again. For an active wrestler, I would ask for that. If I'm Tony Khan, I wouldn't give that to him, or I would put a lot of restrictions on it. But in the case of William Regal, there was no way to know flat out, if you're on Tony Khan's side, I would assume, that a letter was sent to the Wall Street Journal, and all of a sudden, after Stephanie's gone, Triple H is gone, things are going to start falling apart for Vince. But they did. And it looks like William Regal took advantage of just having a clause in his contract and is now out. They're talking about Regal. Everything is talked about. Regal will not show up until after the beginning of the year, which would make 30 or 60 days, I guess 30 days at this point, maybe 60 there's all these conspiracies as to this story with William Regal when this part of the story seems really simple. That's that's it. I mean, I don't know why people I know why people want to dig into it more. But this just seems to me as you have a good agent, a good lawyer, and you actually knew what you were doing when you signed. And unfortunately, it didn't work for AEW and it backfired on Tony Khan because Vince was out of power. Well, the other that thing seems here, that hold simple. on. The other thing is people are looking at this too much as, well, who could have possibly known Vince would be removed and Hunter would take over? the? It's not about that. No. I don't think, I don't think that William Regal wants to go back and be on the road for Raw and SmackDown every week. I think that he would prefer to live near the Performance Center, have to drive there and back, 
largely be at home and not have to deal with all the travel and the stress and everything. I would bet you anything. I shouldn't say that because I don't know. But my gut feeling is that if he returns to WWE, he will be doing a backstage role in NXT. I don't think, I mean, it's possible he'll do the main roster and travel everywhere, but I bet you anything, he's going back to the NXT job. That's, I mean, he his, his role was scouting and mentoring, and he was an on-screen character here and there. But, you know, what a, what a job. G- making good money to live near the Performance Center and just drive to and from work a few days a week and, you know, help these young guys out, and his son is there. I mean, that's what I think he's going back to do. Not like be a, uh, I mean, maybe we'll find out I'm wrong. He'll be a liaison for Japan. Look, and if they want to do more scouting, they've opened up, you know, Stephanie talked about, you know, and obviously it's pie in the sky because they've talked about it a lot with buying another group. One of Triple H's big things that he wanted to do with NXT was have NXT Mexico, NXT UK, all these things that obviously under Vince weren't going to happen. But now we're hearing rumblings of that again. This is not rocket science to me. And I see that, well, I I would have never given him that. Then you wouldn't sign him. Then you wouldn't sign him. So if that's what Regal wanted, and again, everybody's got different things in their contracts. And for a guy who is non-wrestling, who didn't have to be a manager, who could have done a lot of things for AEW, and for all I know, has done a lot of things for AEW that aren't on screen, What does it, again, to come up with conspiracies on this one makes absolutely no sense to me at all. Zero. Zero sense. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. (laughs) My laughing gear. (laughs) (laughs) What is uh, wrestle uh, load? (laughs) And Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what he got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where would Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh! I have right. never. I have. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.